Welcome to worship here at Fair Oaks United Methodist Church. After my little break, I am so happy to be back with you in your homes as we continue to offer worship in a safe distance, in a safe place. We hope that you feel safe, loved, and cared for. Welcome. We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, poly, gay, trans, queer, straight, cis, filthy rich, dirt poor, live in a mansion, or sleeping outside right now. Yo no habla inglés. We welcome you if your family has been here since the Mayflower, or you just got here last week without papers. We extend a special welcome to those who have just rolled out of bed and are watching in their pajamas. Or have worn your Sunday best and especially those who got lost on social media and wound up here by mistake. We welcome those who are in recovery or are still addicted. You are welcome here if you help protect and serve or just got out of jail. We don't care if you're more religious than the Pope or just starting out on your religious journey. You are welcome here if you believe following Jesus is only one of many paths to spiritual enlightenment. We welcome those who think the earth is flat, those who can't spell, and those with multiple degrees. We offer a special welcome to those who have been harmed by organized religion and those who had religion choked down their throats as a kid and those who could especially use a prayer right now. We welcome everyone every, every day, day with open, open hearts, hearts, open, open minds, minds, and open hearts. hearts. Good morning and thank you for joining us at Fair Oaks United Methodist Church for Sunday worship. I'm Julie Strathby and I'll be leading you in music ministry today. Please join me in singing How Great Thou Art. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see with whatever you find divine as we offer up prayers for one another in the world. We offer up the specific prayers for 
those of us who have been praying hard for this congregation, for the ways in which we have gone almost a year without gathering together, as we hold one another in prayer, as we hold our community in prayer, as we hold the world in prayer, we ask for God's blessing, God's continued healing, and God's presence to be felt even though our distance is great. We offer prayers for the Anderson family, for Gay's family, as she has lost her battle with COVID, but yet we rejoice that she is in heaven with all of her beloveds. We ask continued prayers for the family that is ravaged by this disease, for her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren who have come in contact with the virus. We ask prayers for the frontliners who continue to keep us healthy. May they not only be kept healthy, but also be able to receive a vaccine so their family, friends, and loved ones have a little less to worry about. We offer prayers for our law enforcement community who lost one of their own recently. We take a breath for all loss of life. In the sacredness of this moment, God, we ask that we seek to be with you deeply and intimately, cheerfully and joyfully, that we listen to the prophets of this age, of this time, in this place, calling us and commanding us to be more than who we are now, but to move into true discipleship with you, recognizing the ways in which we have fallen short, confessing the sins of the ways in which we have misstepped, and moving to a fullness of life in you, recognizing that all that you have given us is of a gift, and we must be good stewards of our gifts in order to give to those who need so deeply. We offer this in your son's name, who was more than just a prophet, but divinity in human form, so we could see who we were called to be then and also now. We offer this in his name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hello, uh, my name is Fraser. And I'm Miss Deidre. And uh, today we are going to be doing another Bible verse from Isaiah. Uh, this one is 11.6. Uh, do you want to say it? And a little child will lead them. Yes, and this is uh, from the Old Testament, so it is prophesizing the birth of Jesus. Uh, same with the other one. Uh, from I last week, which was Isaiah 9.6. Yes. Um, so, uh, the first sign is uh, little. So you have your hands uh, like this, the palms are uh, parallel to each other, and then you uh, squish them together a little bit. But you, Get little. Uh, yeah, but you also uh, blow through your mouth, like you like scrunch it up a bit, like kind of like you're whistling. So. Kind of like a little. Yeah. Okay. And then child uh, is, um, your hand is flat, it's just one hand, and you pat down. So it's kind of like you're patting a child's head. Uh, and for children, multiple children, you go like this, so you're patting on their heads. And I, I think it's really cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then lead. Lead. So lead, uh, you have both your hands like this, and then push them forward, and that is lead. So it's kind of like this hand is leading this hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or so, both the hands are leading uh, you. the, yeah, or the area in the, which isn't in the hands. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, so are we ready? Yes, let's okay. put that all together. A little child shall lead them. Okay, 
one more time. I gotta get that a little okay. smoother. And a little child read them. I like that. You know what little reminds me of? If you do this to a kid, you answer, ooh, how cute. <laughs> so that's one way to remember it. And doing the lips, ooh, little. Okay, one more time so we end on a good note. Yeah. And a, a little, little child, child will lead them. them. And I love you. United Methodist Church. My name is Ruby Wicker and I'll be our liturgist for today. Our scripture reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 15 through 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among, from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command them. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to, be put to death. God bless the reading of this holy word. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be with you, gracious and beautiful God. Amen. 
Today we hear about God's prophets. Prophets is an interesting word. It's something we use often, but there's a real biblical tradition of what that means. To be a prophet, you had to transcend the word from beyond. You had to be a truth teller and a glimpse of the presence of the divine. It's discovering heaven's will and grace for our lives. I know when I've encountered a prophet, when what they hit is so true, I actually physically do a gut check. It means somewhere in there, there's either a oof or a tightening or a drop. It's something where I hear God saying, yes, you, you are implicated in this. Yes, you, you hear the word of truth. What you do with that moment is up to you. You see, God has always given us free will and the, the prophets, have always called us to what's God's will. And um, the prophets have been with us from biblical time until now. I believe there are prophets among us, prophets who are truth tellers, prophets who tell us the most uncomfortable thing, prophets that call us to God's full word. Now, I'm not talking about if you've ever been on vacation, the fortune teller signs or someone sitting along a, a, a table in New Orleans in the square telling you what your future might hold. These are not the prophets. The prophets are the ones who call us to the best parts of ourselves and call us into a future that God has seen. It's really a glimpse of the divine. The Israelites were forbidden to seek fortune tellers or, or uh, participate in pagan practices because those called for children's sacrifices. That was supposed to be off limits. But it was a way in which, not from the fortune tellers and not from the pagan rituals, but the prophets were able to tell God's word. It was to hear God's word and to provide a prophetic message. We see this in someone like Moses. He was the prototype of all of the prophets. Someone who saw a way in which no one or very few did. Someone who did something that wasn't always well liked. Remember, as they followed Moses out into the desert, they said, Moses, like a bunch of whiny children or people who don't want to do what they need to do, why have you brought us here just to die? We could have died back at where we knew what our death would be, but you've brought us here specifically to die. And Moses is irritated with the people. Moses has said, I don't know what, why I'm here. I just know this is what God has told us to do. Moses is irritated with the people. He takes it up to God and God says, fine, I'll kill him. And Moses says, whoa, 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 I'm not that angry. Maybe we could work something out. And so Moses, God and Moses come up with a plan to allow them to not starve to death. We have these biblical prophets who aren't fortune tellers, they are forth tellers. They are inspired preachers of the divine word. I believe they exist not just in our church buildings, but in our civic places, in our classrooms, not just as the teachers, but also the children. You see, we have forgotten that some of the prophets may have less years of experience than with us. Than us. They come in the wise words of children who speak truth, into spaces in which everyone may be either too afraid or too jaded to really share. The power of the prophet is put, uh, their mouths are put to use by God's words, enabling them to speak the commandments, to power the prophets, uh, to possess a divine right and a calling in the presence of God in their lives. You know when you've encountered the prophet because there is something authentic something vulnerable, believable, and compelling about what they're saying. Even today's messengers are called to declare the gospel of the word and to offer it and also demand that we move to being different than we are based on who God has already put, a, how God has already put a calling on our life. They preach the word of Jesus Christ. Authentic prophets proclaim life, teaching, death, and resurrection.
Prophets are often put to the test. Scripture tells us they were run out of their hometowns often because the people who knew them as people didn't necessarily like them because they were always requiring you to do more, to be more, that we were falling short. And sometimes on a day-to-day basis, that is exhausting. But God speaks in many ways. God reveals God's self in the beauty and dependability of the natural world and creation. God also speaks through our human consciousness, giving us a sense of right and wrong. God communicates history as well. God's will and purpose we can see in the Holy Scriptures. The clearest word has God, the clearest word of from God has come in the form of Jesus. He was more than a prophet, but a divine example who God was calling us to be, not just in the early centuries, but here and now. That Jesus is not one that can be co-opted by a certain group of people, by a culture, a town, a belief. It is only the word of Jesus that can move us from being who we think we are into the space of what God is calling us to be next. So when you get that gut check next time, don't move quickly to the next thing you need to do. Sit with it. That's God's communication through a gut check process. It's God calling you to what is next. That shift, that shifts up to you. And I pray and I hope it comes often, it comes clearly, and you are moved deeply. Amen. Sing this song for the turning of the world That we may turn as one With every voice, every song We will move this world along And our lives will feel the echo of our turning With every voice, with every song We will move this world along Every voice, every song, we move this world along, and our lives will feel the echo of our turning. Let us sing this song for the healing of the world, that we may heal as one. With every voice, every song, we will move this world along. And our lives will feel the echo of our healing With every voice, with every song We will move this world along With every voice, every song We will move this world along And our lives will feel the echo of our healing Let us sing a song for the loving of the world That we may love as one With every voice, every song We will move this world along And our lives will feel the echo of our love With every voice, with every song We will move this world along With every voice, every song Thank you. Thank you for those who are preparing the way ahead, for those who are preparing us in our congregation to have Lent on the go. 
Thank you for those of you who continue to financially support us. Thank you to those of you who continue to pray for this congregation and our community. Thank you for those of you who stay home and are safe. Thank you for those of us who have worked to make this moment one that brings just hopefully one ounce of joy and peace to you. Thank you.